Lately, it seems like more and more food allergies and food intolerances are popping up everywhere. We see restaurants and menus that exclude certain foods because of food issues or food intolerances. The recognition of this is becoming widespread and a lot of people are understanding what exactly is going on between the gut and what you eat. And the odds are is that someone in your social circle has a food intolerance or a food allergy and you're having to make changes with respect to that. In fact, it may even be you, maybe it's your parents, or maybe it's your kids. With all the conversation going on about food intolerances and food allergies, are you wondering what exactly is the difference? Well, in this video today, we're going to discuss what exactly is a food allergy versus a food intolerance? We'll explain the effect of that on your GI tract. And at the very end of the video, I'll give you my recommendation on how to figure out, do you have a food intolerance or a food allergy? Guys, let's talk about food. Howdy y'all, Dr. Islam here, AKA your poop guru. I'm a board certified gastroenterologist trained in the Mayo Clinic and my passion is to give you, yes you, the best tips and tricks so you can live your best life from the top all the way down to the bottom. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and newsletter so you can get great tips and tricks like you're learning in today's video. And if you live here locally, don't forget to come to my clinic, make an appointment so I give you your advice and my advice from your poop guru. So what exactly is a food allergy? This is a true allergy in which your body actually has an immune response to what you're eating. Now this is real. You may have heard about this. For example, the most common one being a peanut allergy. What happens is that whenever you ingest a thing like a peanut or a substance like a peanut, your body actually has an immune response in which you have allergy cells attacking that substance that you're eating in this case a peanut, but it can cause a lot of other problems in your body as well besides GI issues. There are three cardinal symptoms that we see when it comes to a particular food allergy. Number one are hives. These are the splotchy rashes that you're itching. Ah, you get this breakout all the time. This happens to me personally when I have shrimp. When I have bad shrimp, I break out in hives, blotches, and I'm itching everywhere. This is a very typical for a food allergy. And it, usually it's not severe. You can take an anti-itch lotion or antihistamine or take some Benadryl to reduce those symptoms. This is what I do when I have bad shrimp. Next is swelling. Now this is very scary. This is when you get swelling of your face, of your neck, of your body parts. And this is a life-threatening emergency because that swelling over time can cause you to compress your airway and not breathe. This is why for people who have certain food allergies, peanut allergies for example, they carry an EpiPen they can jab into their body to help reduce that swelling and to decrease that risk of that emergent response. Now, if you have this issue going on and you're having things like this, it's very important to carry that EpiPen with you at all times. When it comes to food allergies, you never know when you're going to be exposed to that. There could be peanuts in some food you didn't realize, or it could be made around peanuts, or there could be certain fish that you're allergic to. That's why it's very important if you've been diagnosed with a food allergy to always, always, always carry that with Then lastly, the consequence of swelling is that difficulty breathing. This is when things get very, very scary. And closing of the airway is a medical emergency. And so if you start to notice you're getting shorter breath, you're having difficulty breathing, you're having to strain for that breath, you need to call 911 ASAP. Don't wait so they can come and help secure your airway. And once again, you need to carry an EpiPen to make sure you don't actually have any long-term consequences from that. Now, the way you diagnose a food allergy typically is with an allergist. This is a specialist who actually specializes in things like allergies and your response to that. You may have to do blood testing, maybe skin prick testing or other testing. This is diagnosed with a medical professional who deals with this on a routine basis. That is a food allergy. Let's talk about food intolerances. This is a very different category when it comes to a food allergy. A food intolerance does not have as severe symptoms as a food allergy does. This is not an immune-related response. This is not allergens that are attacking your body, causing a whole systemic response. And there are a lot of foods that can cause these food intolerances, the most common one being dairy. A lot of us, including yours truly, have a dairy intolerance or a lactose intolerance. So what this means is that whenever I ingest dairy, I manifest that with a lot of gut issues. And I can tell you, 
My wife is not happy when I have that dairy. It's a lot of gas, a lot of bloating, a lot of flatulence. And these things can be an annoying problem to have, but it's not a life-threatening problem. It is not an immune response in which your body is actually attacking itself. This usually occurs from your body's inability to digest certain substances. So things like dairy, gluten for some individuals, sometimes certain foods like pears or apples or what are called FODMAPs can lead to a food intolerance as well. Now there are three typical symptoms that I see when it comes to a food intolerance. Number one is digestive discomfort. You just feel bad, a lot of bloating, distension. Ah, you just feel a lot of gassy. It just doesn't feel really, really good. This is a very common symptom you get from a food intolerance. Number two, diarrhea. Yes, diarrhea is a cardinal symptom when it comes to food intolerance. In fact, one of the more common reasons people have diarrhea is that they're eating a food or a substance that they don't realize they are intolerant to. Then number three, abdominal pain. Abdominal pain for sure can present as a food intolerance. Now here's the issue with food intolerances is that number one, you don't have these systemic symptoms that you have with a food allergy. You don't get the swelling, the shortness of breath, or things like that, the emergent situation. But also number two, a food intolerance can occur later on in life, whereas a food allergy typically occurs early in life. So there are a lot of individuals like yours truly that developed a food intolerance later on. I got my dairy intolerance or my lactose intolerance later on in my 20s. I was not born like that, but it occurs over time. And this is very common for a lot of us that have gut issues. So how do you determine kind of which one is which? Here are my steps. Number one, if you have a true food allergy, you need to see an allergist. They are the best people, the experts to find out if you are truly allergic. When I mean allergy, you have a systemic response. Your body actually shuts down. You have that emergent response to that. Number two, your body is the best trigger for a food intolerance. Your body will tell you, hey, this food is good for you, but this food is not good for you. So if you have dairy, you have bloating and digestion issues, you are intolerant to dairy. Same thing with gluten as well. Number three, sometimes we have to take a look with the scope to see exactly what's going on. So don't be afraid to ask for testing, like an upper endoscopy to see exactly what is going on inside your body because what you think may be a food intolerance may actually not be that. There could be something going on, we can find out what exactly is the true cause for why you're having issues. Then lastly, do not order these blood tests that tell you you are allergic or intolerant to these different foods. They don't work. There's no evidence. It's a waste of your money. It's a waste of your time and it can provide more stress and confuse the picture than what it does in terms of bringing clarity. Don't do it. It is such a waste of time and a waste of money. So here's my call to action to you. If you suspect you have a food intolerance or even worse, a food allergy, speak to your healthcare provider about seeing exactly what's going on. They can direct you for what testing, which specialist to see, so you can actually pinpoint what is going on and truly understand what is going on inside your body. Here's my question today for you. Have you yourself experienced a food intolerance or a food allergy? Let me know in the comments down below. What was your experience like? How did you figure it out? What did you do to adjust to that? I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Keep in mind, it's crucial to differentiate between a food allergy and a food intolerance because their management and treatment differs dramatically. Proper diagnosis can give you information to determine what you can do to get yourself taken care of. Guys, I thank you for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and newsletter where you can get great tips and tricks like you're learning in today's video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, let's talk about poop. Thanks, everyone.